Hey everyone, so today we have here, this is the A2337 M1 MacBook Air. Back at it with another repair for it. This one is actually going to be a, a keyboard replacement because some of the keys aren't working. So we need to do that. Uh, we're not going to be doing a full palm rest replacement because normally when you do get these ones, you have to do the full palm rest replacement or you usually just see that on any other videos. But we're going to actually be doing the actual keyboard itself for this thing here. So we have the keyboard. Um, and we're hoping it's this right here and we're hoping it's just a bunch of screws which I believe it's going to be but let's go ahead and see how it's going to be because I've never done this one and I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this one yet so let's just see how it's going to go alright so we're just going to open up the back so, so as soon as I get the right screwdriver perfect okay so we're going to open the back here and actually this one was part of a liquid spill that we did uh, we already fixed all that you can check out the other video with that one. Now this one <laughs> looks like we got to do the keyboard as well because this keyboard's having a problem. It's only a few keys that don't work. It's like uh, I believe like the D and uh, W. I think. I think it was those ones that didn't work, but it doesn't matter. It needs to be replaced anyway. So, all right, what we want to do is just uh, remove this little thing. So everything is under here. So we have to remove at least uh, this part and. I believe there's probably a little bit more to it than that. Yep, we probably have to remove the battery as well. But that's adhesive. But we'll get to that. So let's just do it first because this will just, it'll be a little bit of a process here. If you're not wondering, uh, that's, this is actually, this is actually pretty good, like almost a teardown video too, I guess. So this is a pretty important one because it also does have the home button here. Well, not the home button, but the power. It <laughs> this one's good because it actually does have the power button here. Sorry, we're used to saying home button all the time because you know it's Apple. So yeah, this one actually does have a power button on this one, and you can see this is where the power button is over here. So remove it. I want to make sure we get absolutely everything out of the way, but I think this is fine. I think we could leave this here because I don't think there's a reason to remove it because there's six screws over here, and then you just you take it up, and then this goes out. This is this little flap tail cable. That's the the power button cable. Alright, let's see if I could, I could do it cleaner this time. I'm sorry about that. I know people like to be really satisfied with, with how nice it is, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it just comes off, you know? So, okay. Right, let's try it again. All right, let's do it. That's still very tight. You want to be? Oh my goodness! It's not. Oh, I still got it. Okay. So for all those people trying to be really satisfied with it, this is how it really is in real life. It's not. Oh, it's perfect the first time. Nope. This is how you actually do it. So it's great. And this is just like the the batteries too, like any iPhone or anything like that. It's really similar. At least for the older ones. I'm not sure about the newer ones. Alright, this is going to be the same thing. And they put it on this so you can remove it. That's the whole point of it. So, there you go. Came off. Alright, that was easier that time, but it's fine.
Okay, so this is the backlight. Um, I would recommend using it again if you can. It's always better to do that, but you can kind of see this is a little bit nasty. I could bring off the new one too. I always like using the original one if I can, but there's a new one here because nothing is as good as the new one. But we can obviously give this one too because it's a new one and it does have the cover. What's really important is this black black cover because uh, you want to at least have this one kept on if you're going to do it because what this is going to do when the board goes on top of it so when you place a board on top of it like this there's you're not touching metal with metal that's the reason why it exists in the first place so it's a nice protectant for it that goes in there so I mean I guess this is kind of nasty I don't really want to use it again because you can obviously see that there is, it's very disgusting so we won't use this one again even though I like using the original ones again and we can use this this one again but now let's get to the meat of it because this is what I'm curious about in the first place we can use our speaker as a holder there now what you guys wanted to see and what I was hopeful for and what this actually came out to be is these are all screws every single one of them is a screw I'm just kidding not every single one but most of them so uh, what you want to do is you want to obviously take out the ones that have the screws in it and then you want to leave in the ones that don't so I believe there's stubs on some of them. It looks like there's little s plastic stubs that aren't necessary, but at least uh, the ones that go around are screws. So now we get to the fun process of doing each one individually. I did find a screw driver for this, and it's a good one. So it's a very similar one to if you ever did um, any MacBook Pro screens or MacBook Air screens, uh, there's us usually the, not the Air, I guess, but there's the line here that has Wi-Fi antennas on like the 1706, 1708. We have a video you want to check out how to remove that screen. That's on that too, but that's the same screwdriver you're using here, and it's also the same screwdriver that you're using underneath the actual phone itself, uh, like an iPhone or anything like that to remove the two screws. So let's go ahead and let's just uh, remove it. Alright, if you're still with me, great. Uh, hit like or say say something cool in the comments right now. Say like keyboard or something if you made it this far. Or say like air keyboard or something. Just to let you know that you guys made it this far. I did take a quick look at this and I think it would be better to show you guys too. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to put it under here and what I'm going to do is I'm just really going to be showing you guys uh, what we're kind of dealing with here. So you saw from what I just did that there were actual uh, screws there and for this one it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I was hoping that there were going to be screws that go all the way throughout the whole thing. So you saw that we just did on the sides here that there were screws and now if you look in the middle here you can see that there are these little um, pellets that actually do go in there. I for some reason thought they might have been covered with uh, you can see in the middle one there it's pretty obvious Yes, so you can see that this needs to be removed. And the thing is, this is a pellet that actually goes to the board itself. If you're going to try to actually remove these, you'll actually see that this needs to be replaced. Now the thing is, how are you going to actually replace something like this when you remove it? And the answer is, if you have screws that fit in there, that should work fine. But whenever you do rip this out, um, there's always a really good chance that a lot of these aren't going to be absolutely perfect. So. Uh, if you check our other video, we actually did do ones of these uh, for, for older models. They're like the 1398s, the 1278s, uh, 1286s, those older MacBook Pros. We did the keyboards on these, and you can see that this one you would have to rip out, and you have to hope that all of these do stay actually intact there. Uh, there's a big risk for that because um, it not being screws, if the stubs come out, which a lot of them will because you're, you have to pull it out, and you have to do it by force, most of the time what's going to happen here is that those are going to be totally removed and if you don't have any screws or if the thing wasn't just covered with screws in the first place to put it back it won't be absolutely perfect the good thing is that this was at least covered on the sides there with the screws but when you're ty typing individual keys what it'll do is it'll push down a little bit more and actually it's a good way to show this side because we already did part of it on this one and you can see that this button is actually a bit pushed at least if I could get a better angle but this, this button will actually fall through and see when you push down on that what it's going to do is going to hold that way without that screw in there so we're lucky this side if we hold the screw when you push down it isn't going to go out just like that and it's a lot of focus okay so let's show it again so when you have this, the button here 
that's going to be pressed. This is the one with the screw area. When you push it down, you can see how it's going to lift and push down on the button, that side. And when that screw's in, see if you hold it in like this when the screw's in, when you tap it, it's totally fine. It'll work totally fine. Okay, so since we did uh, remove this, the best way to do this, obviously, just remove everything because this is uh, very gentle and we don't want to damage the screen or get debris all over the screen. So it's really important that we remove everything we possibly can that's going to be in the way. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we do remove these little stub parts because we do know um, if you don't remove this exactly the right way or even when we try to tear it off, if, if you just remove the little top part there, we have to make sure that this is as accurate as it can when we put uh, our screws back in. We're actually pretty lucky that we do have some of these screws, but uh, this is just from another one that we did a while ago. But that's not really the point of this. The point of this is mainly to get this accurate here so we can remove all of these little top parts and uh, we can at least try to put in a screw for each one as best as we possibly can. But uh, this part is really delicate so I don't want to have the screen here. Again, we don't want the debris on there and we don't want to damage the screen. So it's always good to take that out anyway just to be safe. Um, it's always better to be safe than sorry anyway for this. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that we do uh, take this up and we want to try to get as much grip as we can for each part here. Okay, so we've removed it here. Um, unfortunately though, so let's uh, just go ahead and do that and we'll just put it back together and see how it goes. So we're going to put on the new keyboard. And we want to make sure it's totally flush. Because once you do this, there's no going back. So, and here it is again, how it kind of comes off there. But we're going to put all the screws around, and that should help it a lot. We're just going to put this keyboard on. And what we're going to do is we're going to just screw it all back. And then we're going to work on putting everything else back together. And we want to make sure that there's enough pressure that's going to be applied throughout the whole thing here. So, let's just uh, go ahead and do that. All right, so everything's plugged in. Now what we need to do is just test it out. So let's go ahead and do that. Plug it in, app logo quick. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the keyboard. Obviously we don't want to show you the login or anything like that, but looks like those the keys that weren't working before are working, obviously because it's, <laughs> it's a brand new keyboard, I hope so. And even it feels very good still. You see the travel distance looks good too. You want to make sure you always test out all the keys from whatever we could be typing in. Okay, so all looks pretty good. All the keys are working. It feels pretty good too. Not too bad. All right, so it looks pretty good. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, you can see the amount of work really involved in such a small thing. Even though it is an board repair, you still have to basically open the whole thing, remove it, and it's a lot of work for that. But hope you guys enjoy at least seeing that. And um, especially on the new M1 MacBook Air, I'm I'm glad I was actually able to show you guys to do it. We're very fortunate that we do get those machines in, and we do lots of M1s. Uh, we've been getting a lot of them more in, in recently, especially for board repairs. We do a lot of liquid spills on them. We can do data recoveries. Uh, we can fix a lot of different things on them. So. All our contact information is located in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. Leave a like if you did find this informative and you did enjoy watching my my struggle throughout the whole process. Um, hope you guys enjoy watching and um, subscribe for more content. We do have a lot more stuff coming, especially the M1 MacBooks. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy watching.